Every fall, the Georgia Department of Education releases its annual scores for individual schools and districts, known as the College and Career Readiness Performance Index, or CCRPI. CCRPI provides a score from 0 to 100 for each school and district's ability to prepare students for life after graduation. CCRPI is calculated by combining multiple indicators of school quality. Georgia's high schools, for example, are graded by 19 measures from attendance rate to the percentage of students that complete a world language pathway. Yet at the same time, the number of seemingly different measures hides the fact that the majority of a school scores come solely from Georgia milestones. Standardized tests make up 82.5% of the score for elementary and middle schools and 70% for high schools. This reliance on Georgia milestones is a problem since standardized tests are not a good measure of school quality. First, these tests are error prone, meaning a low score could be the result of several factors besides learning, such as lack of sleep, being hungry, or the air conditioning being set too low in the classroom. For this reason, milestone reports include a section titled Standard Error of Measurement that gives the range of scores that student is likely to achieve if they were to take the test again. Also, no test can measure all the value a school provides. How do you grade the richness of a school's curriculum or whether a school has access to a dynamic media center? The result of this overemphasis of test leaves CCRPI as a rough measure not of school quality, but of neighborhood income. When scores are shown with the percentage of students living in poverty, this connection becomes clear. Of the 486 schools in Georgia that have over half of the students living in poverty, only one received an A on the 2017 CCRPI. It's impossible to ignore how as numbers of students living in poverty goes up, grades fall dramatically. CCRPI has the potential to challenge all schools to serve their entire student populations well. But realizing that potential requires policymakers to do some rethinking of Georgia's approach down the road. As long as those underlying flaws remain, parents and lawmakers should take any sweeping claims about whether schools are failing with a grain of salt.